This week's episode of PJ and Dax Real Football Podcast is brought to you by Mystery Shirts UK. Mystery Shirts are an online platform that provides you with random football strips from across the globe. We search high and wide to give you as much choice as possible. From Atalanta to Shakhtar Donetsk and everything in between. Tell us your size, which clubs to avoid and we'll do the rest. Whether you're after a gift for a football fan, fancy a new shirt for five aside, or maybe just want to add to your own collection. Whatever it is, Mystery Shirts have you covered. Boxes are available at www.mysteryshirts.co.uk That's www.mysteryshirts.co.uk Why not order yours today? How you doing everybody? Welcome to episode 22 of the podcast. Another conference special, an absolute belter. Normally we have three on when we're doing this, but I'd say it's, I'd say it's better. Let's get more time with these two guys because we've had a week call off tonight, sadly. So we're joined by our dear manager, Sean Kenny, and we have Southie from St. Caddox, who, oh, I tell you what, I've got two good sides in it. And, 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 oh, aye, and aye. we have uh, Ryan Dekeel, assistant manager of, is it Ashfield? Ah, mate, it's yeah. Ashfield, mate. It's Ashfield, is Listen, it? Listen, we're back to our bread and butter, mate. I know, mate. We're I, back to our bread and butter. Love what we love, Dane. Love what we love, Dane. Two, we, two top managers. Two young managers. Before, I think, Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> before, before we get into it, <laughs> you should tell us. You can all see we have the United uh, to prevent suicide top, and um, we're delighted to be kind of being part of this. And just for everybody, there's always somebody there to talk to, so make sure if you're having any issues, there's always somebody to turn to. Yeah. And it's a great job the guys are doing. But let's get into the episode. So, how you doing, lads? Too bad, Ed. Too bad. To be here. I tell you what, you couldn't shut up, man. That was the quietest introduction ever. Me. I've been, been here for about half an hour and I've been talking away and then, ah, no bad, eh? I'm it's because he just kicked me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm buzzing to get the boys on. I think it's going to be a top episode. Two teams doing very, very well this moment in time in the league. So, let's see what it's all about. Definitely. Let's get into it, man. Let's get two managers. Going for it totally, totally, each other on that. We're going to get a picture of like you and Bungie at the end of it with the oh. two of them just going head to head. We'll put that up next week. That's it. That's it. Face face face. Face. I, think right. I think there's different weights here to be fair. Different weight class. What, what I'm going to say is, I mean, I'm, I'm thinning on top, right? And I feel good tonight. I feel great. How about you getting it? I am, you know what I'm getting it. Huh? He's a raw bald. Ah, I know what you were getting at, you daft. You don't be stuck, man. No one sees. I saw it on the cut. You know what you know what they say, Sean? You're when you get knowledge of football, man, your hair starts falling out. PG, that's, that's how you still got here. <laughs> Very wise. Right, South, we'll start with yourself. This is something um, we've been doing with the kind of specials recently. You got a lot of people who are now watching this, who are coming into it. Um, without knowing much about the, the level or guys that are watching who follow a certain league and it's no yours and they don't pay too much attention to anything else so if you could tell us how you ended up in at St Caddox and tell us a bit about the club and what really is are aiming for and what's going on at the club um, I ended up at St Caddox obviously as you know I was at Glen Afton um, and we were preparing for the start of the season um, we played through I think it was the friendly on a Saturday um, two weeks before we were due to start I think we were going through that transition for the juniors to the west where you had to you had to the Sunday they cut off the Sunday quarter to five or something was the cut off for if you're going to continue playing um, my phone went about 25 on the Sunday um, from Glen Afton basically saying they were going to pull out the league um, and they were going to send their statement to the league saying they were pulling out I, me wearing my heart my sleeve threw my toys at the pram and said well listen um, I, I, I can't go that we're prepared for three months we've brought all these players in I've virtually recruited again brought all these players in so for me I'm out if that's the case because I, I need to be involved in football and people would say oh, that's a very selfish way to look at it but listen without Slot and Glen Afton they were an amazing club I love my time there I think I was very successful there and I think they'll agree um, and I, I, that was me I just walked away um, Z, the captain, tried to rescue it in the last, next week to try and see if we can get his back and get his playing again. And listen, it wasn't to be. And Glen Afton will say it was the right decision. Obviously, for me, I was saying it wasn't the right decision at that moment in time. But they need to do it right for the club. And I, I was sitting about the house for a couple of weeks, and it was the, the day the Rangers Celtic game, the old firm game. 3 1 Rangers, um, just throw that in there. Ah, oh, oh, I like that one. Throw that in there. That's fine. That's totally fine. Are you sure? Uh, are you in the fence with that? No, I'm definitely not on the fence. I'm not, I'm not on that side either. <laughs> um, so I, I, the phone goes, and I was like, I answered the phone, I caught a drink, man. It was also St. Caddox. It was about four, three or four weeks later. Um, I'd answered the phone, and guys, listen, we've heard about you, we've spoke to some people about you, and would you be interested in coming and speaking to us and seeing what it's all about? We're, we're looking for a manager. I don't know if you're aware, Johnny's moved on. 
I said, listen, well, I'll, I'll come and listen to what you've got to say. With no disrespect, I didn't know much about you. I knew you were applying to get in, I knew you were there. I also knew that Johnny had went there, but I'll come and see what you've got to say. Um, and to be fair, within five minutes um, of meeting the committee and meeting Brendan, for me, I'd already my mind up. I was going in terms of the plan and in terms of the infrastructure that they wanted to do and how professional they want, wanted to be, to be honest with you. So for me, that, that's how I ended up accepting the job. Um, in terms of where we're going for the club, um, we I can't believe how big the club is, to be honest with you. There's over a 1,000 kids playing football within within the club. Of that, I think there's like 1,200 kids playing football. I think 120 of that are girls. Um, which only started 18 months ago, so it's been a remarkable transformation um, in terms of how the club's going, in terms of their football. They started as a primary school team, um, and as I said, Brendan calls himself the Jani, if you watch that, I have you for the terrace, but, and then it, it's just transpired for there. They, they give the facilities for dance, gymnastics, netball, I think collectors about four or five hundred of, of them doing those different types of things as well, so it's a huge there's a huge infrastructure there with lots and lots of kids and for us it's all about inclusion. It's all about trying to get as many people in the local area involved, keep them off the streets, keep them active for their health and well-being all that sort of stuff as well. So it's huge and we've got huge aspirations. Um, if you listen to Brendan, Brendan's aspirations is that we'd be, and the club's aspirations is probably to be playing in Europa League in 10 years' time. Um, I had to rein that in a wee bit, to be honest with you, puts myself under major pressure. First things first, we'll see where we are at the end of this season, um, and then we'll take it for there. But aye, in terms of the club, it, it's it's huge, um, and, and do you know what? they're a joy to be amongst, um, and lots of support that I have in place. So it's been great. It's been great. Right. It's something we'll come back on to that after um, Sean tells us a bit about himself and, and the club. Um, but. You can already tell with enthusiasm you have and it's everything that's in place. It's a great it's a great thing to be in and it's good for clubs where maybe it's St Peers. We're quite no quite as big as St Carrick's in terms of numbers, but we've got like five hundred kids and the netball teams and all that and the girls teams. It's it's the best way to go about it. Terrific, yeah. But Sean, obviously people who know you know you've come for Colbright Thistle where you were um you were a chairman, the manager, the free kick taker, the, the <laughs> cone technician, <laughs> everything. And you've went into our dear. And see, to be honest, I mean, I would say that I've, uh, I've kind of maybe been a wee bit harsh on you at times this year. Um, even though I've been complimentary, I think you've done a fantastic job. It feels like, that's how, for me, I was really glad to have the two years on, because it feels like Ardier's a new club, where before Ardier, without any disrespect to them, in my time, have always been the Whitten boys and they had a really hard year, and it feels like it's a new club now. So can you tell everybody how you've ended up getting into Ardier and tell us where the club's going now? I think um, to start it, we'd actually try to get into the West of Scotland, Aye. same as you guys at Waco Bray Thistle. Um, and for one reason or another, it wasn't happening. Um, on then the Wednesday morning, Peter McBlain, the secretary, our dear, had phoned me. The our dear manager had left, and one of the players had went as well. Um, basically, would I take the job? So I spoke to, basically, I'd say, it's, I don't want to answer on the phone, I'll come down and speak to you. We spoke, I spoke to a couple of the sort of senior players and, and people that I would take advice off of as well and went down and met Peter on the committee the commit that night and it was quite an easy conversation. I, I just says to them, we, we, know, we know the history, we know the sort of, as you say, it's, it's been hard times recently. Mm -hmm. But what I, want, what I spoke to about that night was, listen, name our doom and gloom, name our feeling sorry for ourselves. We had a chance to do something completely fresh. Um, there's no money at our dear, so let's youths just the South East saying that's what we want to get to. We want to get the youth teams, and I know you get your teams as well, we've got it yeah. as well. Youth teams, it's got to be youth teams. We're lucky I had an under 20s team in place for Colbride that I was sort of helping coaching with previously as well. So they came and became our dear 20s, um, and a lot of the boys have already played for the first team and, and became actually permanent players in the first team now as well. So that, that's a sort of route that we've always looked to go doing, I think. We looked at it with our JJ squad's 21. Um, so so that's the youth is a, is a big thing for us. And as I say, it's the way that our deal will keep going and keep going. If you've got that foundation, because what can happen, and that's again what I spoke to the committee about is what can happen is what happened there. If I didn't take that job, uh, our deal would have taken a year out on, mm. like that was a Wednesday, they did, on a Sunday, they had to pay an insurance thing or something like that. He says they weren't going to pay it because there was no players and no staff basically. So our dear with a 10 year out somewhat and bank, which is obviously a hard thing to come back to. Yeah. So what I wanted is even one day when I go and whenever that will be, 
the foundations are there that the club just keeps going and there's still players coming through all the time. So long term, the idea will be secure. Well, for, obviously for, for a long time now. That, that's that's the plan, and it will no harm overnight. But we're getting there and we're, we're making good steps. I've heard you speak um, about the committee and stuff. Obviously, me and Dak have both managed at amateur level, um, so we know what it's like in terms of having to do everything and all that. I, I said no amateur level, oh, near, I know, I know, at junior level, <laughs> I know a lot of the managers will tell you that, do you know Aye. what I mean, it's no, I'd love to say that it's just the nature of the beast that we're Aye. in now, you know what I mean. But I've, I've heard you speaking about your committee and can I speak quite highly of your committee, how how are the guys that are dear? Brilliant, they are, they are, again, we know what we've got, we know what we don't have, but I will say everything that they've got, they can give me. And there's times I went, I don't need that, just do hold on to it. I will put it to better use than the line and mm -hmm. here's this far. We were, we were lucky, when we go in the idea, there wasn't even a full set of strips because uh, the boys obviously had to get changed in the, in the motors and all that last year. So boys were getting in with strips and they weren't like coming back and all that. You know, like, every club would have been the same with that. It was, it was annoying, I was getting annoyed with Michael Bride, never mind anything else. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't a full set of strips. So we were lucky we had to kit fake O'Bride. Cobray Thistle, we had the Thistle in the badge or that. So we go by to start with, mm -hmm. then we go to the home strip. Now we've just ordered an away strip through sponsors. But the committee have went right at the start. Peter Scott said, here's 500 quid, we spend it on this. You keep it, we don't need that on taps, like, like jumpers and that. I said, I've got stuff there that will do mm -hmm. They never had a lot of money out there. But he said, what he done was he went, I've raised 500 quid, I'll get to Sean. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of guys yeah. that they are. Every single yeah. thing that they've got, they've got the gears, if they've the paint, <laughs> they must spend a fortune in paint because they have been, everything is painted. <laughs> I sometimes say something's broke, just paint it. Like, <laughs> but they're, they're just constantly working the bar. I mean, we had a fire at the place a couple of years ago, so the big barn, everything was burnt down. There's a new one that they they've done all the work in their cell, but it's excellent. It looks brilliant. Um, they've just finished painting it again last week, but. They, they're just constant, and, and we all know guys Class, like man. that. We all know guys, and these guys. If it, and, and by the way, women as well. There's, there's ladies there that do the job as well, and they're brilliant for us. Mm -hmm. um, but just constantly, constantly doing there, Probably. doing it at the park, and just grafting away. And no even like, oh, I'm going to go and do this, so you know that I'm doing it. Aye. I'll go doing, but he doesn't know I'm going to go. These guys don't know I'm going to go doing. They're in there, and what's they know? And like. Oh, I've done this, I've done the place, it's brilliant. Yeah, so, yeah, for what we've got, it's the, 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 thing, the, thing, the thing for me is just, just on both of you, it's like, it must have been so hard. Like, you've went south, of, as we've already kind of touched on a wee bit. You've been at Glen Afton, and you've been successful. Won the Scottish Cup with Glen Afton. And then, Sean, you've been at a, an amateur side called Bride, a good amateur side, a good name, down in Ayrshire as well. How hard is it for the two of you? to leave that and start afresh, because ultimately, he's starting afresh. Your reputations are on the line, and it? How do both of you feel about... Obviously, <coughs> for you, for me being on the outside, it looks as if it's paid off, or it is paying off, because now we're doing the line, six months or so doing the line, seven months doing the line, even if that, and the two clubs are doing very, very well. So how was it for you? It's because a lot of people are going to Gonna wonder, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Listen, I, I think for me personally, you live and die by the sword, don't you? To be fair, I, I made a decision to move on. It was a bloody hard decision. There was days and the, the weeks went by that I thought, God, what have I done here? What the hell have I done? Because um, I was very successful through the teams that we recruited. We loved the club, the amount of nights out we had. I was massively looked after. The committee down there are unbelievable, very much. They are the unsung heroes. They, they keep this level going. Mm -hmm. um, so there was dark moments where I thought, the hell have I done here because that's the norm but I think you can only become better if you challenge yourself in it and I think as I say when I met Brendan and we spoke to the committee we thought this, 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 everything, this, is, what, this is what we're craving this is what we want something new Look, let's go and prove to everybody else again that, that we can do it um, so for me I, I don't shirk any challenge I think is yeah. it going to be easy no there's going to be days where it's going to be pulling my hair out like a couple of weeks ago in Campus Lang beat us it was, a, it was a tough day for us as a club but do you know what? We react and we move on. So, so for me, confidence my ability first and foremost, and confidence the team I have around about me mm -hmm. um, that we can go and be a success. And everything there is there to help us. Mm -hmm. You're speaking about the committee. We've got like 
all these teams and there's like 127 coaches or volunteers, parents, whatever it may be, can throw their badges, taking time out their week to look after all these kids. They are absolutely they are the, the the fresh air, um, sort of the air that keeps it keeps the club going. So so for me, it, I've got that passion to make sure that I become a success. Just pretty much like all the, for the kids, we've got 13 debuts this year. Do you know what I mean? 13 debuts. Um, you speak about the, the infrastructure of the, the 20s up. Our 20s team are doing really, really well. We've got lots of boys' debuts. And it's not just to tick a box, because they wouldn't get it if they weren't good enough. But they're proving that they deserve it. Whether they've had to get it because of an injury or COVID or somebody working yeah. or at a wedding or whatever it may be, they've grabbed it. So you talk. Just, sorry, PG, just while it's in my head, sorry, cutting you at your step mm-hmm. there, but... I'm taking this. Like I'm just talking. I'm forgetting. <laughs> ask me about Ashfield. No, I'm getting back. <laughs> See, honestly, everybody, uh, Maxi. everybody, <laughs> well, <you're> Maxi. <laughs> everybody watches the show. Be fed up hearing about Ashfield and and heard enough about Ashfield. But what I love, right, Sophie, and and, and I, I don't want this to come out the wrong way, but people speak out way or speak run about the juniors and say. Disposable income wise, St Caddox might have that, but for me being on the outside, that's what I do love about it. I don't see St Caddox going out there and spending money on players and, and all that. I see St Caddox getting a lot of boys' debuts and a lot of boys in their squad for their 20s, and that's what I like. Do you know what I mean? Because, listen, I, I don't know the ins and outs and budgets is not my thing. I've never commented on, I don't think, a club's budget, but that's what I like to see and obviously on your side Sean as well you're seeing your average age is clubs 21 do you know what I mean that's, that's where the success is going to come to see I uh, add on to that and it's something that I found quite strange like because you are in essence could potentially be a Premier League side next year right and so we, could our dear no I'm just I'm speaking oh, yeah, I'm going to do him for you Sean <laughs> <laughs> I'll be PG in this one to be honest <laughs> but see the thing is like potentially you could be a Premier League side next year and you're looking at Clyde Bank, Talbot, Darvel, all showing that our level at the Premier League is very good. Where have these boys been, these nine, 18, 19 year olds? Because we've got a couple of, we've got a few that have come in our first mm-hmm. team, and you're saying you've had yeah. it as well. How have these boys, where have these been that they're able to go into basically a Premier League level? It's starting at 20s league, I think. I think it's 100% agree with you. And the whole carry on about the under 21 rule and all that sort uh, of stuff, we're just going to stop boys playing football. Um, and I think I think they've always been there. Is to answer your question, they've always been there. But you need to find a way. And some club, I mean, we speak about budgets. I, I detest the conversation about budgets, right? Where you've got a good hang budget, on, a bad budget. Oh, <laughs> wait, <laughs> where, you've, where you've got a good, bad, or indifferent budget, it doesn't matter. Ed, every manager would love to have a budget, mm-hmm. right? So a manager that says to me, "I'm quite happy with a budget as opposed to having that budget." Bollocks, absolute bollocks. We'd all have a budget, right? In some form to do something with it. But it's all very well having that budget. You need to spend that budget ah, yeah. the correct way. It doesn't necessarily yeah. bring you success. And I know Dav will get major, major stick. But do you know what? Aye, they've got a good budget. But do you know what? So have umpteen other clubs in that league good budget. This is something we saw before and on the topic of budgets. See if Davo or Pollock, we accept they know Pollock, we've got good money as well. Yep. Somebody has to have more money. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's not everybody can't be at a level playing. It doesn't field, bother so. me because right, when, we're, when we're playing St Caddox in a twenty-five thousand seater stadium in a couple of seasons, <laughs> and I'm not going to be bothered. And you're <laughs> a league. <laughs> 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 uh, um, it's a question for both of these because um, you've both come from one place and went to where he's are new really quickly. Um, something I, I experienced when I uh, left my amateur team, and I go asked a couple of, to take a different couple of amateur teams like right away, and you've kind of just something to touch on what you've said Southie we, do you think you ru- maybe rush is the wrong, the wrong word but you think see when you've come out a job do you think when you get offered a job quite quickly you just jump into it because you're like well I don't want to be out of football for long I'm not saying your clubs are only right for you because they obviously have been but do you feel that way and other managers must have had it where you've left a job but you're, do you have that worry oh, I don't want to be out of the game for very long here and as soon as something comes up you're like oh well I'm maybe that's maybe right for me and I'll just go for it. Well, there's a fear that you don't get back in her. Nah. I think my wife applied for 15 jobs the first week I left <laughs> to try and get me. So Julie's like, I've applied for all the jobs, just go for these interviews to get me to the house. Um, but I, you, you, have that, you have that fear, of course you do. Um, but it, for me, it had to be right. I mean, without being a big time and a bit of an arrogant pig, I was managing the top level and we were doing well. Um, 
and I always, I always thought that I'm going to stay at that level or, or go up, up the way. But do you know what? Sometimes taking a downward step or a, a step to the side doesn't necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And as I say, within five minutes I hear about the project and what we're going to do for all these kids. Because, um, yes, there's a first team there, but there's a thousand plus kids doing different things within that environment as well. So, mm. so for me, yeah, you have that, that fear, as I said, for a few nights I'm thinking, what the hell have I done, man? Join, but then you think oh, I've got to save myself that on a half drive, don't you? You come up nah, every what, second week. What about, what about you, Sean? When you went down and there, there wasn't paint on the last thing there. <laughs> I, couldn't be, I couldn't believe there wasn't no paint. <laughs> you sorted that quite quickly, to be fair. But I think I'm slightly different for South of South. He just came out. I was still with Cobride, and I think I'd, I'd been at Cobride t- all the way through 21 years, so it was a big, big thing to move on and, and, and to go anywhere. Aye. But at, at the same time, it was probably one of the things that. I probably could have done it. Well, I could have done it earlier, and I always sort of says, "Oh no, no, the right time. I know this and know that." But we just in your comfort zone, as you say, that new challenge. And I mean, I have taken the new challenge at our dear. I'm delighted. I'm delighted. I've done it. And the good thing for me is there's no sort of guilt way to leave people because like, we we were lucky enough mm-hmm. we turned the coaches and players and everybody yeah, ways, yeah. and even again you're back the twenties that were going to be there. The whole setup sort of came with me, and then we've brought a new new bunch in at Kilbride so that's still mm-hmm. gone as well See that's something that you've spoken about before where um, if you had go into the Division 4 there would have been a new full team that went into Kilbride this or anyway mm-hmm. so basically they'd have been that's, I didn't know that at first and I remember thinking to myself boy oh, he's kind of it's a club he loves and he's kind of left them in a bit of a shithole mm-hmm. but then you're like well that was always going to be the plan regardless when you were going to take the team senior if you were going to take like your team Aye. and the senior so it's kind of the club were always in the same place. Do you f- maybe putting you in a position here, but see if the option came up for Cobride to begin back into the west of Scotland, how would that be for you? Because you've obviously got something and you've been building really well at Art Deer, but Cobride's a club that you obviously have a lot of love for as well. How would that be in you? That won't happen. Aye. Um, the thing with Kilbride was we'd, we'd started the new team had started in the bottom league and never taken our place in the, in the Premier League amateur so we started at the bottom it's, uh, it's, it's a completely new team the way we were a completely new team 10, 11 years ago whenever it was we started that in the amateurs um, so they guys are they guys are just they're cutting their teeth and, and they're getting things right and I get same way I'm doing it up there getting things right and getting things wrong um, and learning and it's that's not even on the agenda. What we are still trying to do, there was th- talk about facilities and things like that. We're still trying to do that and look after things that way. But I, as I said, I'm sort of I, I'm, I'm out there now. Like right. that's I, I wouldn't. It's no, that's not going to happen. But it's not going to happen because I don't want it to happen right. as well. We, I, we probably could make it happen again. We could we could go back to it, but we won't be applying. Right. For, that's cool, Bride. We'll, do you we'll, know we'll what? Focus that there. Do you know what I think? And all that what will help why I think Sean's been successful and why I think he will continue to be successful. See that, you've said you're 21 year at Kilbride. You must have some knowledge of the football down in Ayrshire. Mm. Players, amateur players, even probably junior players know that as well because, let's be honest with you, where they like, say, RD or Ashfield and things like that, it's maybe the market you need to try and get is a few mm. gems for mm-hmm. Ayrshire football. And, 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 and they'll say... Yourself, Sophie, if there's any club in that thing, if there's a good amateur player going, you'll try and get them. But mail for us, so your your knowledge of football down there must be second to none. I think that, I think it was because I'd also been involved with running the Ulster Select team as well. Right. So I knew I knew everybody mm. really for for the top of the Ulster Amateur Association, for the guys in the suit sort of way down to the players and coaches and mm-hmm. and everybody. Um, still got a lot of pals. Some people who. Be on this apart way, they're still there as well. But it's just it's just a new road again. Now. And again, we spoke about it before we come on. The amount of the amount of people say speak to Southie quite a lot and people like that. Like, mm-hmm. Just building that back up at this level now. And it's it, it's always players. I think is on talking about you, Sean, with the amateur players. I'd say Southie, it's you, Flipway. Mm-hmm. You've managed the boys at a higher level, so they boys like your likes are. Menzies, Malik and not they all come down and play for you because they know you and they respect you and they love playing for you and they, they get you so it's good now it's players that always want to go Aye. and play for characters and guys they know and trust well, and all well, that. I, I work in recruitment it's my job to do day and, and the 
best form of recruitment, the best form of sales is word of mouth. Mm-hmm. If, if you're looking after people properly and, and you're giving them the, creating the right culture and the right environment for them to come and enjoy their football and giving them the right platform that it's done the right way, they'll tell their pals. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? They're all, we're on umpteen WhatsApp groups with ex-players, players, growing yeah. up, young, all that sort of stuff. So for me, that's the best recruitment tool for us anyway. And yeah. I, I think I've been very fortunate in that sense that when I went to Glen Afton, they had good players there. So I, I took over from Tommy Bryce at the time, who'd brought in some good players. Prior to that was Dan Henderson. So I, I think being down in Ayrshire and, and being amongst all the good players, it, it, it absolutely has helped. Mm-hmm. Especially when I went to St. Galaxy, I think 11 players out. <laughs> I was going to mention that. Is that how that's, many? Was it 11? 11. It's not uh, Sean took mayor. Yeah, dear. I know. But see, to be fair to him, he, I, I know Blown Smoke Up, he's asked the job he's done. That's my job! That's my job! That's my job! That's my job! It's a big enough ask for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but the job he's done has been terrific Aye, it's been definitely. absolutely terrific and what I like about me I don't, didn't know him before this season uh, is the fact that because it's very hard sometimes after a game you're interviewed because sometimes if you interview him after a game you, I'd be going to be going mm-hmm. tonto yeah. but it's been able to talk after a game and, and try and articulate yeah. your points of view across the way you do it and be, you've got your boys not under panel for you so it's, it's massive massive be fair, tip we, to the hat we've spoken a lot about your interviews um, on the roundups with the um, listen I'll be honest I'll really be good. honest with you and it's no blowing, blowing smoke up arses time yet but <laughs> I'll be honest I've I've been in the divisions we had there for the last what, three years or something before we, before the new structure and they were rock bottom mate mm-hmm. they were rock bottom they absolute rock bottom and that that's no disrespect to the club because I hate to see that any club. I hate to I hate to see it because I know how hard that is people not their panning and how passionate people are about their club and stuff like that. So I'll be honest with you, St Caddox and RD are in the league, but it's actually it's good to see RD are having a good season mm-hmm. and I'm getting that feel good <coughs> factor and all that because it's been a it's been a long time coming for them and it's good, yeah, it's, to see. it's good to see a different team as well. Like we were talking about um, yourself with knowing the amateur game down there, and oh, I know what it's like. It's you could be the best coach in the world, but see if you don't have any contact, particularly at this level, because you, you don't have scouts or anything like that. Really, I mean, you maybe have a mate or two that can watch games for you, but you you don't have it without the contact. Players in it, and all. Oh, just about players. Players. They're the best. They're the players, best players, scouts. Man, players. Just go Aye. come and play. You'll enjoy it down here with such and such and that. And to. It'd be kind of, I'm not really going to ask any questions. No, it's, it's, been, it's been good. But it's good, but, you know, I think we've spoke about St Caddox and our dear, and it's good for people to know. Definitely. I think because even St Caddox, to that respect, it's like a lot of people will know pure no know a lot about St Caddox. Not well, that, that's the thing, my. But Southie's hoping that that's, that's all change. changing. We had brand of football <laughs> down there. My, uh, my brother stays here in America, and he was um, he played junior football for a few years after he finished playing senior. Uh, so he knows the level. He actually texted me after, see when we had the conference B1 with uh, Chrissy Cameron and, and Spud and Hopi. Oh, we'll be. Eh, uh, sorry, I'm going to fed up holding your horn. See, sorry. So I'm sure we... you kicked him to say for anyone as well. I'm telling you. <laughs> I know. So I'm, I'm tied to us for see this Darvo and Breton game. Who are they? Davo and Breakin, right? It's Breakin, Davo tout- again. You might go up to uh, Breakin? Uh, you might go up to Breakin. I'm, I'm touting the BBC. I think they should On be top having... Of the hedge? I think they should be getting. I think they should be having on that panel people that know you're stuff right, about right. that level of football. Well, with well, the the boy in the Clyde Bank game. Who was it? They know a ball for a balloon. We were there. Who was it? No clue. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to hammer them. Darren Jackson, Jackson when I know yeah, yeah, the ball. Here's one for these boys, right? Oh, That's a bit off topic, right? But we were at we were at the Clyde Bank game, right? That's it. That's coming out the Clyde Bank and the Elgin game. We get put up brilliant with Clyde Banks, so we're doing a wee episode for yeah, their track, Scottish man. Cup game at Home Park. <laughs> and uh, look at North PG goes here and wants a wee uh, interview with the, the BBC presenter. Right. So it's the guy with the white hair and all that, right? So PG goes here and gives it, all right, Dougie, please to meet you. And that calls him. No, you didn't. Dougie Dolly, mate, from the Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> so He's here, like, all right, Dougie, thanks very much for your time, Dougie. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm talking to He's talking to. Uh, Paul, the media man at uh, Clyde Bank, and I'm like, I said, I'm a Fidelian, I swear, I cannot remember his name. I was like, it's no Dougie Donnelly. I said, Dougie Donnelly? I was like, and I was like, Dougie, can I get a word with you? <laughs> and he came here, and I was kidding. Did he correct you? No. no. So he was too nice a guy for that. So I came here just to go to the interview. I'm like, 
Doogie's definitely know his name. So I called him the main man for the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say his name because I could but not. Oh, yeah. oh, as soon as he walked to Israel, I threw up the claim. Uh, <laughs> I had to apologise to him after it. But there's you, nothing worse how many times you walk, yeah. uh, you walk along the suburb with the missus and you'll stop and somebody will talk to you for 10 minutes and you ask all these general questions just to try and work out who the hell he is. Oh. And walk away and the missus will say to me, you've got a clue that isn't you? Oh, like, I hate that. You've got a face, but a clue I that is. I just call every mate in part. Oh, oh honestly, 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 I'll tell you what. Where's Coast of Scotland, you're See the best, the see the, see the best <laughs> it was, boys, see when the game was done. We were, doing, we were shooting a wee bit with the boys and, nah, and they were stoning. Like, what were they, about 50 years away? Aye. Or something, were they 50 years away, Craig? Aye. And I'm shouting, do you? <laughs> Do you? <laughs> it's the rest of Scotland, boys. He's all getting out of big beam on that. But anyway, we went off, t- went off track here, but I just thought that they're all going to see that anyway. But aye. I am, honestly. I'm glad you done that because you were late for work, so I had to, I had to do the first half <laughs> myself, man. Mars was making buttons. Right, anyway, St. So Caddox and Ardeer, where are we going with this? I don't this? know what the fuck I was asking. I thought you'd done well, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Maxie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I've got my questions to save me here. Sean, I, I, <laughs> he's in the heavy oh, right, right, right. I've not seen a man this day obviously since Cy Ferry rocked up in the St. Channel. And I and I go sorry. It's time for the name called me Sean. What <laughs> 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 to you? <laughs> Shut up. Hey, let's so, do that. Always ask this question, and I think it's kind of obvious for you. How do you feel your season's been going this so far? Obviously, what. Well, as we spoke about, we've, we've punched up off our weight, but the, the boys have been excellent. Um, again, I, I sort of say that a couple of times at the start when the games were Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday. I felt sorry for them because we would do well on the Saturday. I would go in after the game, they'd get five minutes I've been harping, and then I'd be moaning about on the Wednesday, and then it sort of kept going. As, as it sort of went to one game a week, getting getting extra time with the boys, and, and it, it's been good. They're, they're, they're working really, really hard. Um, Obviously, with a great result at the weekend there against Trun, but we had, we had two badges before it, and I, you know, it's like once you're in it, once you, you're in that sort of bad spell, mm-hmm. it's hard to, it's, it's easy to lose sight of what it is. We've lost four games out of sixteen, mm-hmm. I think, in the league. Nah, so when you take uh, when, we, that. when when the boys come in, you spoke about Rock Bomb, the, the rankings of the all the clubs were sixty four to sixty four. Mm-hmm. So to have lost one out of four games, I know. It, it's all right, we're doing no bad. But again, I keep saying them, don't be the team that done well up to October. We need to keep pushing on and and use use the train game at the weekend as that's what motivation now to go again. We've got an easy run coming up anyhow. <laughs> so <laughs> we've got a very hard run coming up actually, but we just need we just need to enjoy it, work hard, enjoy it. The boys the boys are good players and then hopefully but hopefully we finish the season well. Uh, it's C B fair, it's been the turnaround and also particularly taking in mostly amateur players. I know you've had like Fry and Wilson and that, they've played at the old junior level and stuff and you've got ah, a couple of rot in there, but <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've He's punched more coming in us! What a manager I'm to make the boys good players. <laughs> but uh, you've got a few who have played at that level. But it's the bulky that move your head back, man. Sorry, mate. Is that, I'm, I'm trying to put that down dead <laughs> quiet. The boys are saying, don't make a noise. Um, you get a coaster. <laughs> so you've. It shows the level of amateur, a good amateur team who can be coached well in that. It shows that there isn't a, a huge gap. <laughs> you maybe know have quite a level of consistency mm-hmm. as your top level teams have, but it shows there's a lot of good players doing at that level. Mm-hmm. And I suppose it helps that you've had the boys together as well, where it's just you're just moving them to a different league and as a higher level, but they've handled it very well. So you must be pretty proud of the way they've gone about it so far. Hundred um, percent, and I've I've sort of said that before as well. Like the the good established amateur teams against the sort of lower junior teams, I think the amateur teams are usually better. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, that goes to every level as well. The top juniors are against the sort of lower professional and that. Mm-hmm. I think the top junior take it as well. But again, it's just it's just the sort of consistency thing. That's that's a sort of key word. We, we were quite consistent at the start of the season, but momentum was great for us. The two the two games a week coming quickly that sort of carried us. But we always sort of spoke about when that run, when that run sort of finished. That's when we see the real character and. And how are you? Can you can you take it doing? And retain it doing off canvas lang. They they come doing it's four one, but they were really really good that night, and, and we won they. Um, and again, it was like right, well, this is what I wanted to see. I want to see 
because the sort of team morale are rolling on, it can be quite fake sometimes. Or you don't really see how they're yeah, tested. Definitely. It's once you're tested, I want to see it. And the boys, the, I think we're not beginning to win one nil, which was a great result. Um, clean sheet, solid, fought for each other. You don't go to Green and get an easy game. And um, I, I was really happy with that. And that sort of set a tone a lot. And sometimes we'd go a goal behind and, and we'd end up winning by 2 1 or something like that. They've just shown character all the way through yeah. the season. Yeah. And that's what I've been really proud of for Well, you're mentioning that Canvas Lang game. CB, particularly at that time, I mean, they were absolutely flying, so there's no no any shame in that. He's have went and won three and drawn one out of the next four, and the one you actually drew was Dorai, which would have been the one that, on paper, you'd have looked at and went, right, we'll go and win that one, and we'll try and get what we can get out of the rest. It shows the boys have a bit of character, because even when you, every time you lose a game, he's going and win the next one. Mm -hmm. So it shows that there is a bit of character. The big one, for, I think the big one for me, the big one for me when we kind of, when I kind of, Stood up and goes, well, dear, I've got a bit about them. Now, don't get me wrong, they've had a lot of impressive results. See, when went down to Kalluk, and a quarter past eight kick-off, which is a horrible journey for you to get down there for a quarter past eight kick-off. We know the situation, what Kalluk was like for preparation. Any team, it was horrific. All getting seen, and that was no fault, no fault of Kalluk. Um, and he's 2-0 done at the time. 2-0 done. And then he's won the game 5-3. Five 5-3, three. Five three, right. And I'm sitting saying to myself, They've been down there, played on the Saturday, the game's on the Wednesday night, and then they've got a game on the Saturday. I think they've picked up points again on Saturday, and I'm sitting going, that just shows you because they boys have been working all day, gone to that game a quarter past eight kick off, no getting into probably after midnight. Aye, aye. Recovery time's non existent, up for work in the morning and gone. It was kind of similar to what we had Kell on a Wednesday night, and on it was like down there, all sure. hands on deck. Yep. but. That was tough at the start, I thought, for the boys, and you might feel the same, Sophie, for the boys at the start of the season. You were asking a lot of them, weren't it? Uh, it's, it, it's too much, I, and, I, and I understand the rationale behind the, the Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, because they tried to front end the season to get as many games played as possible in case. In case do you know what I mean? Whatever happened. Now, touch wood, it, it's calmed itself down, and we'll, we'll see out the full season. I, I generally believe we will do, but. Mm -hmm. It was, it was bloody hard. Do you not think we're going to finish up your early? Aye, aye, unless you go long in the, unless you go far in the cups. Aye. 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 Unless I'm we're going to play three weekends. I'm Quick. looking going. It's not only the but the start of November near enough, and we're halfway through. We're halfway through. Five, through. Five, five home league games left of the season. Five. That's insane. Isn't that's mad. Well. <laughs> I mean, like like Sophie says, you understand the and logic. A 20, but it's in a twenty-eight game season, or not? Twenty-eight. Aye. Because at the start of the season, obviously, COVID was still quite prevalent, and it seems to have. Can I fade it back? Maybe when the winter's coming, it might get worse again. Yeah. But you can see the logic. But at the same time, like we we spoke about our league, we've only got nine teams in our league. Uh, sorry, eight teams in our league. And you're like, we you didn't sure have to teams? do that. We yeah. didn't have to go for a mad rush. Because you look at we were at both cups already. Because we had uh, Bead and Drumchapel. Same with some of the other teams. You're like, mm -hmm. it was never going to be. Yeah. But a case of that for us. But see, be fair, the eight teams, the eight teams in the league. Right. Why not just split amongst the three conferences? Because the top the top three go up and it's second, third and fourth the seven down because they're our 16 team league they'd nothing to lose and everything to gain mm -hmm. do you want just put them in amongst it? Uh, this is something we've spoken about before and I hope that it was maybe just yeah. to see if teams could see the season through yeah. or it, we lost Western early like before a ball was kicked I think they maybe just wanted to see if teams could see yeah. it through and hopefully they are I'm going to ask you this question but maybe tailor it a bit more because Sean I don't think there was massive pressure on you and expectations when you took it because of where the club had been but there would have been I imagine a bit of pressure on you especially with, with Johnny leaving and stuff maybe no pressure as he would but I'd imagine a bit expectations so what what did uh, your committee look for I know you probably had higher expectations yourself but what did they look for when when you've come in I, I think for me it was about listen I'm not going to hide for it for us the, the priority for this season is to go and win the league Right, I'm not going to hide for it. And that's what I say to our players all the time. The pressure's there, but it's pressure you put upon yourself to go and win a game of football. Do you know what I mean? We should be turning up on a Saturday, turning up on a Tuesday and Thursday. Exactly what Sai says. When it's there and we're at it, we're going. You mentioned it the other day as well. You work your, not your bloody pan in. So for me, the pressure that we've put upon ourselves is we'll, we'll put together a team. And in my opinion, the hardest conference. Mm -hmm. um, because St Carrick's were a nobody up until this season. Do you know what I mean? Nobody knew about St Carrick's having a first team. We've threw together a team, Johnny started the work and obviously whatever's happened, there's happened and we've come in. But 
for me, we, we need to be we need to be up the top end. We've got to be challenging to go and win that league. Um, against your Canvas Langs and your Gat Cairns, who are pretty good sides. And I think, when you look at Conference B, New Mains have done really well, Ashfield have done well, Glasgow United, they beat us 2 nothing. we got what we deserved that day, we, we, we take our medicine, we move on. So it was never going to be easy. We were never just going to come and trounce everybody. Do you know what I mean? But for us, we need to beat the top end of that table. We've got to be challenging for, for the top spot, in my opinion. And, and, and for, for two reasons. One, because you have the glory of getting into the top league, the big league against the big sides, where you, 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 there's lots more fans, it's more exciting, you're playing against better teams, and you're, you're properly in the pyramid then, so to speak, in terms of the top of it. So for that reason itself, but also for me, there is no point in taking the job if I didn't think we could go and challenge for that league, to be honest with you. And people might be just thinking, I get twat, do you know what I mean? It's not as easy. No, it's no bloody easy. We've lost two and drawn, drawn two. Do you know what I mean? It was never going to be easy. We weren't going to go and whitewash teams. And I don't think anybody was ever going to go and... When we beat Camus Lang first game of the season, they went and won 11 in the bounce. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then Gart Cairn beat them. And then they went on, on, on a run again. So, so for me... Yeah, we want to be up there. Yeah, we want to be amongst the big boys. Yeah. We have assembled a squad of players that, in my opinion, are Premier League players. But it's all very well. Games on the one in paper. It's all we were having Premier League players. They need yeah. to go and date on a Saturday. How, how are you feeling with this? How do you feel with the season so far? Are you happy with it? Listen, I think you can always tweak things. I think for us, 35 points out of 45, lost two and drawn two. I can dissect it to him blue in the face. One of the games we drew, we missed a penalty. Um, 93rd minute against Greenock. RD, I think, on the face of things, the draw was probably a, a, a result that should have happened in the right way. To cut of chances, they had a cut of chances. I think you've been a bit kinder to me. Yeah, we've got it. We've got it. We've got it. I've never played good over it. But I think you've a lot, many of the chances. We, we had a chance right at the right end. Right at the death, yep. We, we, I've, we, it's a great result for us, drawing at St Caddox, but I went down the road nearly green yeah. <laughs> because we were the last kicker of the ball we scored. But yep. uh, St Caddox have missed a penalty, the goalkeeper's made a few a few really good saves for us, and it was a lot of pressure for St, uh, for St Caddox. But just about went at the end, I was doing the touchline already, and Aye. I, mean, we I, I would have to start it early to get right on the way down, but <laughs> it was, it was a strange game. It, it was, uh, mate, it was, and I think, listen, I we've done well, but you don't hand out trophies in October, November. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We're halfway through the season, yeah. the winter's upon us, injuries, Christmas, stags, honeymoons, weddings, that's coming. Do you know what I mean? It's a different breed now. Do you know what I mean? I would never have in my day ever have thought I'd be saying to my manager, I've got a stag at the weekend or I'm going to a wedding at the weekend. Oh, or my, my, my missus has booked a holiday. I mean, if Julie came in and said to me, I've booked you a holiday, first I was saying, where'd you get the money for? Because you're always telling me your skin. <laughs> <laughs> and secondly, oh, fit buzz. July to, yeah. to April, what are you doing? Um, so, so for me, there's a long, long way to go. The defeat a couple of weeks ago is not the wind out of sails um, with Camus Lang. Um, but, do you know what, we need to react. That's the great thing about football, as I always say. There's always yeah. the next game to go and rectify the, the wrongs. Um, and it just so happened that obviously you've the got, game was off on Saturday. You've got quality. You've, I've, we've played against you fairly recently, and there's quality players there. So, were you, were you in the helm? I don't think bouncing back is going to be an issue because you've got the quality. How do you feel? Sorry, Sean, no, you go. I just, just touching on what you're saying, I think on that, you, you look at Sakada, you look at Gambus Lang, you look at Gart Kern, this, this is my best job thing to say, but they're three Premier quality teams. Yes. And I think even in Cups, you have beaten the Buffs, um, Gart Kern with Donny Beath. Mm -hmm. that's, that's big, big results, and obviously, again, it's a Cup, so it doesn't say too much uh, consistency wise, but. Mm -hmm. I think that the quality in the three teams we've played all three of the teams and they're we, really good teams. We've we've <clears throat> we've praised that lot, Canvas Lang, and deservedly so, because as you said, Southie, they've lost their first game and the character they've shown and the runs they've put together, very impressive because we all know in this league it's a lot of difficult games, yeah, totally. uh, especially to put put that kind of run together. But Gart Cairn as well, I think that they've turned Turn the screw on a bit, do you know what I mean? So six weeks ago, so while you look at that team and going, done and dusty, we're at it. Do you know what I mean? Look at them now, I they're know. right in amongst it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Then you go yeah. in like Sean says, you go and scud bead, and that was totally. I, I looked at the bead team that day because I like, thought they played their kids, but they didn't. I, I'm, I'm quite pally with Butch, and I was, I, I speak to him kind of reasonably regular, and uh, I'm lucky for I, you. I, <laughs> and I looked, I looked at the the result, and I looked at the team line, and I was like, that's a good team he's put. Aye. And then speaking to somebody else, um, they're like, it could have been 10. I was like, I can't believe that. It's some result. 
but the shows there they've really switched see they've brought in a couple of extra mm-hmm. players and they've really yeah. switched on yep. see for yourself Southie being at St Caddox where it's kind of building for the ground up it's all brand new you won a treble at Glen Afton Glen Afton I mean you've got the the trifecta down there with come up Talbot and Glen Afton massive clubs how have you felt being in with a brand new team where you've maybe not got everything set up here right away whereas in Glen Afton your committee all know inside out what they're doing your, every player knows who they are most would fancy coming down to play for them how have you found being in a new setup? It's been good and see to be fair anything I've asked for we've got um, whatever I said we needed it was there the next day I've got Barry Lemke at the club and he's one of he, he's I, I, he makes our jobs so easy everything's done for us do you know what I mean he, he, he turns up with all the gear the player that vest the whole lot all that sort of stuff as well and we're just trying he's, we have as a club they've created the most professional environment ever for us so the transition from having it to not having it and starting again it was, it was it was relatively easy to be honest with you and I think a lot of that came from the fact that I brought boys with me from Glen Afton um, there was massive reshuffling I think I, I, I took the job on I agreed to take the job on the Monday. The first train night was the Wednesday. I'd brought in, gone after to let boys go. We brought 11 in the Wednesday. There was 33 players at training mm. on the Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. And I had to have the really uncomfortable conversation with very experienced players that are bloody good players and say, listen, you know, for me, I'm going down a different route. So be it. So the first couple of weeks were really tough. So we'd, we'd everything and then some, to be honest with you. So it was yeah. tough. But, <coughs> Joe, you, you, you and you go with what you trust. You, you bring in players that you trust. You, you bring in players that you know. Um, and that's what I thought. I was very fortunate that I had that. I was very fortunate going after and letting them all go in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, and let, just freed them all to come and play. So it was, it was relatively easy. So you're, you're talking about having the 33 players, obviously, last year. Then on the flip side of that, six went back to Glen Afton right at the start of this season. Mm-hmm. How was that for you dealing with that situation where that's quite a, that's a big impact on your squad? It was, it was a big impact and, and to be fair out of the six we probably expected three to happen anyway um, to be honest with you just because of the locality the location where they are and where they stay and, and, and Mick McCann coming in and saying listen I think I should go for this job and absolutely I, I love Mick McCann bits. he's absolutely terrific and it's, and it's a brilliant club so we kind of knew those six we knew three were going it was a wee bit difficult when we thought Christ we could Close mm-hmm. to you losing these other three, but yeah. but it's like anything else. You, you, you can't wall and self pity. You can't just, just procrastinate over for two or three days. You need to just move on. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I'm very fortunate, that I know a lot of people in the game in, in, in terms of what I've done, and it, it was relatively easy to go and reach out to other players that we know. And some of the players recommended people. Yeah. The club knew of people, and we had some. I mean, I promoted. I gave three straight away. Um, and the senior squad for the under 20s who was right. the one she's done so the wee winger one so we Andy Gallagher um, who's the wee winger the wee that's Andy Gallagher ah, yeah, Andy. Good, decent he's very very good got a right good chance <laughs> Nathan Wade who has been unbelievable for us he's been absolutely terrific um, and big boy Kieran McAndrew big centre half and young Jack Agoli um, we promoted him as well so we had four so where we lost six we had four immediately straight away but we had to add experience to that and we had done that with Ross Barber Ryan Lockie um so it was good. We brought in Tommy, Tommy Palmer's there. Anyway, Mark Miller came in, um, who was who's, who's been terrific for us as well. And we had the trust, tried and trusted and tested of Chris Dallas or Gunners or Z's. Yeah, we brought yeah. in Rich McKillen for Hurlford, who I've tried to sign for the last six years, to be honest with you. Um, I think that's why Henders not spoken for about six months. <laughs> but um, he's, um, he, he's been great. So we brought in experience. We have the youth. Yeah. So we've got the legs there. And the average age, if you think about it, we brought in two boys for St Mern that get let go. How these two kids get let go for some is, is is embarrassing, to be honest with you. Um, but I've reaped the rewards of that, and we brought in your boy Max Kerr and Max Brown, and them. they've been great. And then you compass that with what we've got at the twenties. It's been mm-hmm. it's been all right actually. It's been alright. Sounds fair. not too bad. Sean, how is it for your boys? Something I've found with um, St Peter's. I brought a lot of players in at St Peter's, and I mean ugh, the boys will probably would mind me saying it but I still feel there's a very amateur mindset in a lot of them where technically good players there's no, there's, for me there's no doubt they're good football players but there's that mindset you've touched on boys booking all oh, my missus booked the holiday like I actually had a laugh with one of the lasses my work she's seen a boy who um, plays at her level and this is the first time she's been out with a boy who plays football and he's like 
she wants to book her a couple of days away and he's like, oh, I can't. He says, it has to be during the weekend. He says, I can miss the odd training session. Can I miss a game? And that's that's a, an attitude you're like, that's for me, that's the way I was. Yep. My missus knew we didn't go away <laughs> during the season. Ah, it's so, and I know you've suffered with me and you've spoken about it. You've suffered me. I had, a bo- I, had a boy miss- I had a boy miss training two weeks ago because he was getting a tattoo. A tattoo. Know what I mean? Unbelievable. But I told him to stay away. Unbelievable. What? What Let's see. Play? I'm not telling you. <laughs> I know, I'm by not, the way. Do you? Yep. How do you know that? Can I tell you? Oh, I'm like, that's... No, I'm only joking. I'm like, that's... I mean, can I tell you he's before, man? Uh, no, it's fucking scary, mate. It's absolutely scary. But it's scary. a different... It's a different mindset now, isn't it? I mean, for me, it's, it's like you train Tuesday, Thursday, you play Saturday, you don't get your pan in. Mm-hmm. I, I, say, I say my players all the time, the, the worst thing that anybody could ever say to me after a game, any manager, call me shite, call me fat, call me bald, call me fucking tombstone teeth, whatever, call me whatever the hell you want, whatever name you want, and I've heard it all a million times, but see if you say to me I've not worked hard, that's worse than call me anything. Mm-hmm. And for me, that, that's a prerequisite. You turn up and you work hard. Mm-hmm. And if you don't work hard well, I sure. say that to my, I said that to my boys last night, the other boys last night. I'm talking as if I'm the gaffer. Oh, because Max is No, listen, this weekend. end of the day, it's been all about Aldean and St. Caddox here, and you heavy Take your chance on Saturday. That is poor wee ass shield again, don't know man, what to on say, the back. I'm when only I can't talk to you about it, you don't want to talk no, about it. No, no, I said to the boys last night, I think it's the best the best squad that we, that's been at the club in a long time, in a good few years anyway. Probably since the gaffer and all that, we're on the top division. And that's just me being honest with the, the calibre of players there. But I have a wee, I have a wee hang with the the mentality and just their wee bit. Of, I think I think they could just give that wee bit more. But it's not even. I don't think it's more work rate because when they go on a Saturday, they're outstanding. But I just think, see their mindset when they turn up. I just think that I just think they should be more in the zone. I think they should just be more. I need to turn up. I need to be on it. I'm gonna be on it right for the get go. And I just think. Maybe it's, maybe it's, I actually don't think it's an attitude, I think it's a wee bit more professionalism mm-hmm. and applying themselves a wee bit better. Do you know what I mean? I think some, some of them are a bit laxed and full of carry on. And listen, I'm, I was always Mr. Mr. Carry on myself, but I'd like to just see them try and sh- screw up that wee bit more and see what it takes them. Because that's think probably the difference between the, the making oh, that a wee bit know. higher. Do you not think it's hard sometimes that like, you're turning up on a Saturday? There's no room to stand in, there's no dress rooms, some places you can't get showers, one week you can get a shower, next week you can't get a shower. Ah, yeah, Do you know what I mean? It's, they're all over the place. I'm not making excuses for players because when you turn up, you know you've got a job to do. Yeah. Right? Regardless of when you turn up an hour and a half before or an hour before, you need to do your job. But I, I still can't fathom why some clubs are allowed to have changing facilities and some are not. Mm-hmm. Some you need to stand at the pitch and some, some, some of not. the council stuff and that, that right. they're not allowed to. I don't know if that's changed recently because I. I but they can go and play volleyball and netball and sports centre and they can see, see just you're saying PG about the coming for the amateurs and, and that sort of thing don't, don't know why um, and people see this so they'll be able to call me out if I'm, if I'm talking nonsense it's quite knowing that I'm about a hard task master, master with, with that side of things when you sign for me yeah Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday yep. all the way Aye. through we, we've again this a conversation we've had yep the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, um, I don't... The worst thing that you can, the boys will come up to you and say, I've got this at the weekend. All right, have you, eh? It's been booked for ages, mate. Nah, uh, why, the, why did that, you book it then? Is that a four you started playing football on a Saturday nah, that you've been doing for 20 nah, years? Nah, See, yeah. things like that, and I just... And obviously there's things that they come up. Life does come up, and I get that, but it's just, it's... it's I don't want to hold a journey here. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't miss training sessions. Um, well, I'm missing one tonight, but... <laughs> hey, that's tonight. To, I'll, be, to, I'll catch you. I'm watching that. That's, like, to, promote, <laughs> that's <laughs> to promote the club. Though. That's it. It's club, Aye, club business. <laughs> but again, it's... I, I'm, and I say to boys that come in, and even coaches that come in with me, I'm not an easy guy to work with. I'm not because I'm quite OCD with things. I'm quite... I need things done this way. I've got a set high standards for the boys. I mean, we had... And again, go back to the conversation with South Head a while ago. Um, we had seven boys away at the races um, and I don't think it's a coincidence and I'm not I've had a dig at these boys so I'm, I'm not c- going over all ground or anything like that the seven boys that had went none of them had been with me before this season mm. none of them had been coming through the amateurs with me so it's maybe knowing mm-hmm. what my standards yeah, were yeah, what yeah, I expected yeah, for them yeah. the fun out if the fun out 
when they told me they were going to the races, um, and it just so happened we were playing Gat Cairn that weekend. We seven guys, Matt Scott Cairn's going to be a hard tail game by everybody there. And I'm not saying it would have changed anything, but you're, you're, you're a blow doing already when you've got seven guys missing. To play, to play one of the top teams in our league. Part of the problem it's with that is, is you, you end up getting like with boys doing that. You almost take out the boys that are there as well. Totally. Which is mm-hmm. which isn't fair. So fair. And yeah. you, you can't. I suppose you can help it, but you, you're so wound up about it. You you day take out them. I've said to like when I was still in coaching with St. Peters. I've said to them, can I like? It's all right. I appreciate this year. Like the gaffer had said. He was being a bit more lenient this year because nobody had been able to get away for the best COVID. part two years. I was about to say that. So he, he's been quite lenient on it this year. Um, and I, I stepped back because of work. I couldn't be telling boys, you have to make all the time. And then I missed three out of five games. There's no way I could do that. But I'm saying to boys, it's all right saying, oh, like, oh, this and that. But you've made a commitment. When you signed yeah. for us, you made a commitment to yourself, to us, to the rest of your teammates that you were going to be here as much as you possibly could. Mm-hmm. And I think that they're not getting paid so there's only so much control in a sense you can have yeah but you've made a commitment I think you should be looking to honour that commitment that you've made to, I've, to the club I've got to say as well I've, I've used that example but on the whole my, my boys have been yeah. excellent with that thing and I don't what like what are they saying about you doing at the pod tonight Sean do they know no no I just, do they uh, know I just, uh, I'll be writing that tall tonight no, I'll get something on <laughs> they're just players they don't get something on tonight they'll That's not it. watch us see, they watch what everyone they'll not watch us they'll watch everyone <laughs> we see because I'm on it they'll not watch it this time they'll listen to him even now when I don't have to <laughs> see um, for yourself Southie obviously you are playing at uh, the Ants now what's what's, going, what's in the background for you what's the future hard for you to, to get your own part so I, I think fundamentally it's, it's not about the first team it's about the academy um, and I think there's, plan, there's plans afoot things are happening in the background Covid's and councils and things just take that three, four, five, six month longer than they ordinarily would take to be honest with you so there's plans within the area to develop our own facility um, it's just taking longer than we anticipated it to take and you need to jump through certain hoops you need to certain do things you need to justify things as well so there's a lot there's ridiculous amounts of work that's happened in the background but the plan is to have our own facility but until we have that facility we're very very fortunate that our friends at, um, at the Ants are looking after us unbelievably well uh, the park I, mean, I said I said to Lawrence and that one the other Saturday they come and help us so Lawrence and, goes down on a Saturday know, I, was doing, I was doing it Lawrence is brilliant what a guy what a bloody Lawrence guy Lawrence is man. brilliant man um, and, and, and we turn up the park before I went there I didn't know much about the park and the park's brilliant it's excellent uh, the park is absolutely I remember our very first game of the season I was texting by Lemkin I was like oh, the fucking rain's been terrible man. is this game going to go on is the game going and he's like me of course the game's going to go on I went to the park in the first game the rain had been horrendous there was like 12 games called off and it was like bowling green it was an absolute bowling green and I always say how good it is because it's getting played on every week every right. single week every week we on. use one yeah. week and then the so Ants the next week we used to have it, it when I, I went to the Ants Gordon had tried to get me for a few years and I went to the Ants um, and I'll I had, keep you I know oh, <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had a couple of offers <laughs> that were probably better teams and I went to the Ants because Cotter tried to get me and I thought I want to play in the hoops um, I want to play on that park and we used to there used to be games on a Friday well sometimes there were games on a Saturday morning and we'd play on a Saturday afternoon and you wouldn't know it's terrific the, the park's unbelievable I actually I, Mark McKenna would probably if he watches this could maybe correct me I'm sure Ibrox was half one week and uh, McKenna Park was on Ibrox was half one game they'd been flooded and McKenna Park was on I think they've had one game off in like six and a half years and it's because of snow half. no Aye. 15 year it is is it 15 year 15 year once through rain in 15 year and uh, Martin was telling me he was fuming he's like that should never have been half <laughs> absolutely Aye. fuming it's fault for Aye. calling it half I mind he was saying we went down there but in terms of the hospitality the way they look after us they're brilliant second to none I couldn't have asked for any more to be honest with you so, how's like, your playing surface in this one uh, it's it's all right, the boys might be telling you it's no, but <laughs> aye, it's well, our dear. You cutting it for next week? Eh, no, no. We've got a horse to cut. We've got a horse to cut. Sean's got his boots on before you can do that. We've got a horse and cart on it. I've flown next week. But no, it's our dear was famous. It used to flood quite a, quite a bit. I think obviously the COVID's helped it. I mean, they've been constantly on it and that. So. It's all right. it's, it's, it's decent, it's still it's big nice part, and green. It? It's, it's big. I think our deer in shots. The biggest parts? 
I think they were. They, uh, at one point, they were. Really at one, one point, Aldea was bigger than Hamden. Does it? I've never been at Aldea. Mate, seeing I haven't done Aldea, right, Southie? We went down a couple of seasons ago. I mean, what? We were at the dugouts. Is the dugout still at the away dugout still on the other side near uh, the fence? Uh, and a couple of boys were mad with it and they were walking up through the gate and they're shouting, Mon Aldea! And they're shouting, who, who are you? And I'm standing at the bench with Maxi. Who are you? And I'm like, Ashfield, mate. And they're steaming bottles of buck and that. And they're like, Oh, yeah, dear, get right into these chukters and all that, right? <laughs> <laughs> into these chukters and that, right? And I'm going, I'm turning around, man. I can't hold my, lap, my tongue. I'm like, well, no chukters be fake. Let's get a mate. And he's like, even worse, <laughs> man, he reaches, <laughs> man, and I bet them on that. That sounds, you, that sounds like Kate that wants the bar, actually. <laughs> but all you, man, we were doing that, was, that was, there were some characters, actually, they were only, they were walking by, but now, because what Sean's doing there, they're all going in and watching the team now, they boys were only walking by, see the and gave us its thinking. No, fancy no, dress. Fancy <laughs> dress. They're no, they're no steaming anymore. They're all high on the paint fumes. I know. Where are they calling ourselves, Sean Ultras? Is that what they're calling ourselves? The ARC. Are they? See that is? The See ARC. That you look at what that's done for Here, this is a message for the ARC. <laughs> <laughs> you carry no, on, no, you carry no, on. No. I'm going to get tumbled, you know what I mean? The ARC, he's are doing a great job supporting Sean. See, to be fair, see stuff like the, the ARC. You look at what the Rock have done. With their kind of Forza Candy stuff and all that. See what that's brought to. Ah, if you get community, them, see if you get aye, community buying into it, it can, that's it can something grow I was arms say and legs. You, you've been big on getting local players, mm -hmm. and obviously being kind of earlier that that's your market, that's where you know people. How important is it to you to have local players? Because I'm sure you've got a lot of Stevenson boys in your team. Uh, we obviously I'd always known about our dear and the local chocolate situation, maybe in a summer situation mm -hmm. in our What I could never understand was. Don't get me, and there's, there's been some really good guys that have come down for Glasgow and played for these teams, but there's been other guys that, that won the better than what's, what's local, and that's not against the guys that came. There's just, there is good local players. Mm -hmm. Go and get, put a local team together, get, if they, if you win, lose, or draw, you go back. The club puts is. It's good to be club puts in on it. It's good to be for the for yeah. a pitch. You need to walk by it and you come out to change them, so you will still pan. You know, it's like, just get that bond. It's no guys yeah. driving up there and driving up there and driving up there. I think that maybe what you lack in ability, you get that bond, you go out and you fight for each other and you deal with that. Yep. That's what I always thought that these teams should be doing. So it's, the, it's what I've looked, I think the furthest player I've got is called Burnley. Cool. And uh, David Gray, he, he's been an excellent signer. Yeah, I've seen you go him for Cole Burnley. Uh, he's been there. brilliant. See, in terms of you saying that, we... See the ARC, sorry PGC, when we play, he's doing there. I'll come in and get a pint. You obviously you're buying, but I'll come in and get a pint with the ARC boys. Right, I'll come down and watch, and I'll be in with the ARC. Yeah, you better support that. Yeah, you better come down and fancy dress me, and you'll be getting a letter down there. I think the boys will tell you I don't buy a drink. <laughs> <laughs> the gaffer doesn't buy drinks. Nah, no, it's just because well, the Southie didn't, <laughs> Southie, Southie didn't get his one day when we played them at the Ants, but Southie, but Southie's came out. He was trying to do steal that one in my water. Don't you stop. You keep telling that story. The wizards. Was that guy? Turn my water. I'll give you back. <laughs> See, in terms of how you're talking about having the local players and that, that's more likely to get you people through the door as well, through the gate, you know what I mean? It's, oh, See, if you've got yeah, the people that come down and watch you, your, your fans of the club, see if they're able to, Saturday night they're going for a Chinese or something, and they bump into a couple of the players that are going to the pub or whatever, and they're local, that, that gives them that that closeness and bond with the club as well, you know what I mean? We've, well, we've, that's we've how you can build it. Few, we've got quite a lot of local, it's all local boys now, well, the majority of your, your team's local. And it is, they're no, listen, we're not getting bumper crowds and, but listen, see an extra 10 to 15 oh, people through the massive. door. Do you know what I mean? It's just that wee bit extra and it's cause it's all pals and that, eh, boys in the team and stuff like that, or partners and things like that. So it's always, it's always, it's always good, you know what I mean? See, see what you just saying as well, after, after the game on, on Saturday, obviously the boys are at the fancy dress and it's, it's a good win for the club. Um, because we came for Colbride, long story, we already had a sponsor in a drossing. Uh, one of the pubs, one of my mates that runs a pub, the top shop, it's a great pub. Uh, there we go. Uh. But, uh, Is that the one you were doing, the Sean Dyche? Was that no, Sean that's, Dyche that's where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, so, so we, we always still go back there, because I guarantee for the season. Right. So we always still go back there, but the, the fans were, it messaged me on Facebook, uh, we're all doing it at the pub and Stevenson, do you want to come down? I was like, the boys, man. 
have they done? So all the players, all the fans at the Cairn have fancy dress, have they done? Just a pub, just across for, across for the Ardeer Stadium. Brilliant. Um, it's just great, I've done it and then I've done Ogier and, and it's get get taught on. Like, you go for your go for your roles. I used to go for my roles in the and I go for my roles in Stevenson. Just get in the community Aye. and uh, just getting everybody. Back see, down. see when you don't have money, that is it's vital. It's a lifeblood yeah. for a for a club into where you you have that local thing. I, I've always found as much as I've done ozone the watches. I love the port and I love my time there. I feel that being at Park Lee, you're at the tune. Yeah. You, and I I feel that kind of kills the port a bit. Where they are all Kelburn before they were right in the heart of the tune. Mm-hmm. That's what annoys me about Ashfield a wee bit, man. We should be getting more people in the door at Ashfield, and I don't know, I don't know what it is because even when they were in the top division, South, when you were playing in that, still weren't they getting big crowds in at Ashfield. Yeah. We're right in this, we're right uh, in this scheme, scheme, man. We're right in, right in that catchment area, and it's I don't know what it is. I don't know. And, and that's what we're missing as well. It's if, if we fortunate enough to get our own facility and get it all done and dusted. And that Where is that going to be, Sophie? So it'll be somewhere in the Mearns. Right, right, okay, so sure, I'd imagine right, so anyway. Right. Um, there's three or four sites um, that they're, they're talking about. What's right. the best one and what's the quickest one that can get something up, apparently get it built in like four months or something like that. So that's what I try to do. But I didn't realise Newton Mearns, the, the, the capacity of Newton Mearns is like 70,000. Ah, More massive. than Kilmarnock. Ah, mm-hmm. That's huge. Be bigger than Kilmarnock. So, so for us having our own place, our own base... Where it be for the first team of the kids, people are going to then come and start watching. Yeah, yeah. And you're then going to attract more and more people that are going to come. There's no one our team in that area no, as well. There's so nothing. You've got Paul, for... Pollock's probably the closest yep. no, um, to us, to be fair. And listen, look, look what they've got going and watching every single yeah, week. No, they're they're that's brilliant. Huge support. See, see like, what we did, um, and I imagine pretty much everybody does this, um, we've got youth clubs where we gave all the kids free season tickets and it's, uh, it's kind of twofold for me. It's, it is a, a selfish point of view where but you want the parents in with them so you can get a bit of money. And, but then at the same time, I don't, I'd imagine 2016 is the youngest teams you have. Um, that's kind of the, the youngest you're getting now. We're the same. That's the future of your club. And even if, even if these kids don't make it into the first team in however many years, 15, 20 years or whatever it is, they, see if they've been for a five-year-old going to watch St Caddock, Gerardiers, Ashfield, St Peters. Yeah. That even if they're going to be Celtic or Rangers fans or whatever, that could be that's their team as well. It's like you have that the whole way through. We've got a group of young boys that come and watch us and uh, they end up on the park all the time and they, they just they're always wearing St Peter's strips and they Don't love St Peter's and you're like that that can be their wee team forever because we don't know has ever been able to get to the top level is very slim but it, it's spot on that, that's what right. we do now so we let the, if you turn up your St Caddick's gear on regardless of what team you play for you get in for nothing Aye. the reality is they're going to come with a pair anyway Aye. do you know what I mean there's been games this year where we've had four or five hundred Aye. Aye. Aye, it's, like, it's very noisy it's a lot of the kids but that's the future of the club that, that, that's what we need to build the foundation on, this, on, on the club totally going forward and, and doing totally and giving 13 players debuts I mean, I've, given my, I've given my boys debut do you know what I mean? he's just turned 17 but he, he's got it because he's merited it and he bloody deserves it. Mm-hmm. But he's played me twice. He's only 17 year old. Mm-hmm. We've got big Rudy McIntyre's debut, 16 year old. Do you know what I mean? There's been other boys that have got so I say 13 Aye. boys. That's what's then going to make people stand up and think they're not just in it Aye. to bring in whoever they want. They're actually caring about the, the infrastructure that's, club. That's and why you are the, that's why you are bang on the guys that should be in the job he's in the new because he's care, he's a go to the club's best interest at heart. That's what my big thing is about Maxi. Maxi has done a Ashfield, tremendous, oh, mate, tremendous it's a amount. Full-time, part-time tremendous job. amount. Oh, right. Half a part with the community. Everett Nails opened the Ashfield Cafe. Ties in with the local schools in Chernside and things like that. So, even though I think Maxi's brilliant running about the first team and as a manager, I think he's outstanding. I just think he stands for a lot more in the community and what he does. Not particularly I mean? see we. Newton Mearns and then you look at kind of postal and stuff you see the difference in, in social kind of side we're, of we're trying to, what we're trying to do sorry to interrupt no. PG but what we're trying to do as a club is see affordability mm-hmm. for football but I feel we try and make it affordable but that's there, I'm no do, we are our academy you go and play in our academy is a lot cheaper than what it would be to go to other academies in no too far I can, Areas for yeah. where we are, and I'm, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sit here and slaughter other clubs or anything like because that's I've never done that in this podcast. But what, what, what our clubs trying to do is, is 
make football affordable in these areas where parents have to go too much. Areas, some to deprived areas, areas where parents like have to go too much. You know what I mean? That, that's what I love. Ab- that's what I love about it, and I love a- I love that about the club. See, for me, I, I find you don't, and I'm not saying this yourself, right? I find that you don't get people talking about it, and it's no. All, the, all this stuff is really selfish by clubs because they're seeing a long term thing where this will benefit our club but at the same time it's very selfless where you're like we can help these kids out we can give them a completely a possibly a completely different avenue to go down because yeah. like, you know it's I mean you know what Postal's like it's a very tough area it's very yeah. deprived and all that so but could, the, be, the best but, thing about the best thing about obviously I've no sport much about Ashfield but the big thing for us is Max, he's a Milton boy, mm-hmm. and I was like, all right, I was maybe Bishop Briggs, but my family were all post on that as well, so, and then we Riza, when Riza was there, he played for the club and that, and he was local doing it at Bishop Briggs, we are, and that's how we've kind of got it now, we've got a lot of boys from Milton, Springburn, Poso, and the management team, and that's all How many kinda good players kinda, have come out of that area? Oh. Brilliant, and I'm, I'm not for one second going to say I'm a good player, but I, I live in Pollock. I played for Postal IM, yeah. the police station, Saracen Street, behind Saracen Street police station, aye, aye. the pitch that was there. Do you know what yeah. mean? I mean? I was fortunate enough that somebody seen me play there one night and I got my break aye. to get in. Do you know what I mean? It's, there's no enough kids playing out there just now. You, si speaks, you mentioned the other day, how many Astros you see closed aye. when you're doing them? It's no, embarrassing. No, it's, Open the bloody Astros and let the kids bloody play. It's bad, isn't it? No, it is. It's, it's hard. Um, I was kind of, see, to be fair, this, is, this has been quite good. This is flown in. Mm-hmm. I need always need to keep my eye on it because then Craig starts giving me a hard time for doing. For finishing up, we're obviously. Good, we're good, we're I good. Good. Just give you a thumbs but, up there. Mind right. what you've done with saying I am the you didn't get the wings, not. I don't need to get the wings. Where'd you have to do that for? Where's my aye. notes? Aye. I've completely forgot what I was going to talk about. Aye, that threw but, um, obviously, we've spoken about how you think the season's gone. What's your, your hopes for? It's always, it always feels like a daft question, but if you can try and be as honest as possible, where you want to be as high as possible, what is your aims for the rest of the season, Sean? Well, what we spoke about, we, we actually never set, set any aims when we come in. We just wanted to win as many games as we, as we could. No, but as I said, we spoke to the boys, and you just need to take stock of where you are. We're sitting fourth in the league. If we drop below fourth, then for now on in, that's poor, that's disappointing. Right. So we need to just try and keep. Mm. If we if we can get into that first division next year, that would be unbelievable. That's a double promotion. As I was going to say that that but ultimately yeah. becomes a double promotion By for the, the club to be. Well. It's going to be hard. There's a lot of guys on a lot of teams on their tails. I think there's still four or five club news guys that can mm. that can get there. I would arguably say next season, with the second, third, and fourth in each conference, and the seven coming down. A fifth in each conference, the seven coming out, that arguably becomes an even tougher league aye, next that's, season. That, that's confident. I think you look at the that first division. Even, yeah, first division. Even, I call even that. just the new that are, I know it's not going to finish this way, but even the Bennett, it's going to be a crack. See, my, see my, my big thing is, it's very, very tight, and where we're sitting at the league, it's actually annoys me and Maxie. I know it does because I'm sitting and I'm going, if people are just here, look at that where we're sitting. But we're only, I think, like, what, three or four? Is we, 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 we but you're 24 right? points. You're only two points behind Thornywood, who are in sixth. Not which, which is the one above? 28? Ren- so, so you're okay. four points behind Renfrew. In fact. I'm sitting going like that to myself. I think I said it before then. If you were sitting saying you were a few points off the back of Renfrew before the season starts, you're thinking to yourselves and you're ahead of them. I think our, our position, we're a better side than what that kind of shows on paper than now. Um, but as we say, we're just at the halfway mark in our game, so hopefully we can climb a wee bit. But as you say, Sean, if you can finish in that top four, if a club like Ardeer or a club like Ashfield, it's fourth, fifth, because I think fifth might, because some people are saying fifth can be enough to get you in, yep. just depending on... Well, see, see on that... See um, on the league, see their see the teams on their points, see if they put the, the points that you've got, and you and that, and us, even us. You'd be higher up. I know, no conferences each of each year. Well, see, yeah. see, obviously, you've had um, the win against Troon, which is the first one against a top flight team for the club. How? Uh, this is my ignorance. Have um, Ardeer ever been in the second top tier? I've no idea, yeah. and I wish you didn't ask me. I don't know. I don't know. So. I, I don't ever remember. I, well, I started playing the juniors in 2006, I think it was. I don't ever remember our dear 
been in the Super First ever. No, um, yeah, so I don't think they have. No, so right. see when you're saying it's a double promotion, that shows how much a tremendous season you're having. Obviously there's a lot of football to be played, right, so you don't so. know what'll happen. But it's one of the ones I think that the club's gonna be exceptionally happy with, with what you and the boys have done so far. But again, the thing the thing is and then you get you get the obvious things with the heart is which which are just part of the job and people come and look and the work we've got to do for boys next year is say, right, well, how, how do we take the next step then? And that's what it's, it's just about developing it again and, and taking the next step. And I don't mean next step as in, right, we'll spend this or do that, as I don't know, but how do you make it, you'll see the other side of it, how do you make it even more professional? How do you make this a place that you want to stay and, and, and be able to look forward and say, we can maybe do that or do that or do that? I say to the guys when I were in, when I take a job this year, See if you just want someone that's going to come and, and try and not be bought in the leagues every year. I don't want to be that guy. I want to be people behind us if they're going forward and try and push up and push up and push up. And I think that's what we've got to try and do. And next year, as, as we said, a lot of football to go. No matter what league we're going to be in the white for it, because even the teams that don't get up into the first division, there's going to be good teams who aren't in the first division. Whatever league we're going to be in is going to be a really, really hard league. Definitely. But we need to show enough ambition and enough sense about how to plan things that, that we can go in and we can try and have another decent season I'm going to ask you a question that I think everybody knows the answer to what's the aim for the rest of the season listen I think Camus Lang are four points ahead of us right so it's Camus Lang's league to lose and that's not that double bluff carry on they win their games they win the league so the disappointing thing for us is with Camus Lang beating us it's out with our hands now so we're relying on other teams to go and take points over Camus Lang what I will say is, if Camus Lang go and win the rest of their games, well, they deserve the plaudits, and I would be the first to phone and text and say, listen, well done, guys. But it's a bloody tough league. The winter's coming. There's lots of football stuff we've played. I think we'll all still lose points or have bad days between yeah. now and the end of the season. And I think it's about whoever, between ourselves, Gart Cairn, Ardair and Camus Lang, and, I, and that's not being disrespectful for the rest, not at all, because that's the four that probably detached ourselves a uh, wee bit from yeah. the rest. Yeah. Um, Thorny would maybe try to grab a hold of the fourth place but it's who can be the most consistent for the rest of the season because we've, we've started to play Gart Kem we've started to play Ren through we play Ardia next week as well so you, you, nobody knows it's around the corner um, but for me yeah we're four points behind but Joe, you know what it's only four points it's, it's only four points it's only two games isn't it it's two games, two it's, games two draws, it's two draws it's two defeats yeah. whatever it may be yeah. um, so for us it's yeah we want to be up there we absolutely want to be up there we want to be pushing if it's if it's Camus Lang beat us and we'll push Camus Lang the whole way, well do you know what? Fair play to them. But for us it's about trying to just I'm not, I'm not gonna hide for it. We, we want to win the league. I, I went there to win the league. I, I'm not I'm not gonna hide for that. I'll put I'll put that pressure myself right now. We're there and and the, the players know that and, and and don't take that the wrong way, it's not a big time shout. We we, we for a minute we want to win it to win it. And that's it. Um, and yeah. we'll, we'll give it a best shot. That as well. yeah. See, um, something we've spoken about every time we do this, and it's a conversation I quite like. See, for me this year, is, it is what it is in terms of you've got your. I know Royal Albert have had points deducted, they're sitting with one point, Dorian, uh, New Mains, eight and seven. This season's no really a proper season for me. It's just, it is what it is. Next year, I think that next year will be unbelievably good because yeah. you have the Premier League teams, you have all the teams in the first division where because it's all the teams who have done pretty much the same stuff yeah. you know that like normally in a, a league you have somebody one or two oh, teams that are six or there, uh, six or there. they're normally like yeah. it's kind of my just the fight to stay in the league it's a just, lot can happen all good teams. Be players and situations can it you lose managers that, lose players to other clubs and all that so and uh, the, but uh, it'll be more, it should be more competitive it should be more an even keel with more competitive because I think it was so competitive I mean I, I've spoken about it quite a lot See your Royal Alberts, Dorai, New Mains. See when they go into leagues with Solcoats and that, brilliant for them. Because there are teams who have had such a hard season and they've done well starting out and you go, now we're going to go and win 15, 16 games next season yeah. instead of uh, we win two or three. But, that, but that's well, we'll why say, it's a massive, right? sorry, Southie. No, that's, why, why, that's why I know you're saying it's not a kind of season. What, what was the word you used? I can't remember now. You said it's not a kind of proper. It's not proper. Aye, you know what I mean, no. Aye, I know what you're getting at, but. It is proper because Aye, look at Ardair and Aye. Ashfield or Thornleywood. If we can get in that top four, then you jump two leagues. So for our clubs and for being in that first division when you're going to probably have 
seven big teams coming down for the tap division and big teams missing out and the big the teams that are finishing second to fourth or fifth, then it's going to be a massive difference for the cl for, for the clubs in it. Does it become the luck of the draw? So say the seven come down and the, the three go up and the second, third and fourth that will be creating our league. Is the rest then just drawn and you end up getting the next league and then the next league and it's your sheer luck where you end up in? Or do they go based on our points no, basis based, what league you go in? No, I just based I thought on it was your like placing, your position. So your placing I like six right. to ten. So second to maybe second to fourth or okay. maybe fifth get you into first division, fifth to nine for something get you into that and then So some big teams are gonna miss out. I know. Well that's the thing, yeah. you could be looking at uh, I'll just I'll throw it there, right, even though they're doing really well now. Peter's Hill were having a wee bit of a tough time they've really turned it around they're doing well but see if they decide because they were in that fifth position sixth position for a couple of weeks there imagine Peter's Hill going into the third tier and you're like that's a big big club who yeah. are probably better than, than that level you know but that's where they're going to drop that it but there will be teams that maybe have just had like a bad season the ones I think about that are that maybe hang it is the another conferences see like a Lanark and that who have had been oh, good bad. seasons the last couple of years and then they're, they're, they're finding it difficult look at the the drum some rock, it's a rock in that league as well you've mm -hmm. got Nielsen, Nielsen well. you've got Wishaw Kilsyth sorry Kilsyth Kilsyth with that budget Sorry, <laughs> Levy. <laughs> that's your phone going by. Oh, I tell you what, that's as good a place as any end. I think this has been excellent tonight, and I really appreciate you um, missing training for us and giving up your time. It's been excellent. Who missed training? Nobody. I'm gone. I'm gone to new. Are you? You're missing the like Air Force on tight terms, <laughs> straight in amongst I'm it. I'm telling you, man, it's like Pep and fucking Sean Dyche, man. We're going to go up to their training rock now. But just don't meet to finish it, say. Uh, Blow the smoke arse up the arse stage. Right. Couple of top managers, couple of top guys played against the teams this season. Uh, two good sides that try to play football the right way as well. Uh, it's going to be an interesting second half of the season. Definitely. Division B is good. I'm a big kick. I'm a big, uh, big support of Division B, especially on the show. We're coming up against uh, Conference B. Sorry, coming up against the sides, but. A lot more football to be played. Two good guys, two good clubs. It'll be good still to play Southie again at home. Still to go down to our dear to see Sean. Uh, get that drink. Get in there, put that, that kind of casual mob down there. <laughs> I might even put my quick scooping hat on and my wee scarf and just go down there undercover. Ali Al Habsy undercover. But looking forward to it. Can't wait, boys. I wish he's all the best. As I say, everybody in this, uh, when they play in the league, it's, uh, I wish he's the best every single week. Unless he's a playing Ashfield, then I hope he's get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, but, uh, thanks all for your time, guys. We really boys. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As always, like the episode, subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. We hope you've enjoyed this. It's been a great episode. Cheers. Have a good week. Cheers, trips.